Let's see how limits can help us solve the tangent problem, that is to find the tangent line to the graph of a function. And the search for the answer to this question will lead us to the key notion of derivatives. We start with this figure, which shows us the graph of a function f in red and a line connecting two points on the graph. We call such lines secant lines as they slice through the graph. Our aim is to find the tangent line to the graph of f at this point, the point with coordinates a and f of a. This goal of finding the tangent line at that point is equivalent to saying that we are looking for the slope of the tangent line at that point. Now it is the slope of these secant lines is what we can easily compute by taking the rise and dividing it by the run. So the rise being the difference uh, of coordinates along the y-axis, that is the difference of uh, values f takes at x and a, f of x minus f of a, divided by the run, which is simply the difference of coordinates along the x-axis, so x minus a. Thus the slope of the secant line is just the quotient of these differences. This is why we call this fraction the difference quotient of f. In this particular case, for the secant line that you see, the slope, the difference quotient, is 0.5. Now we can reach our aim of finding the slope of the tangent line by letting x approach a, and the limit of the slope of the secant lines gives us the slope of the tangent line, provided that the limit exists, which it clearly does in this case, and is equal to the number 3. And it is this number, um, the slope of the tangent line to the graph of f at a, that we call the derivative of f at a. The derivative is super useful because we can use it to approximate uh, the function by a simpler linear function. Our original function was not a linear function, as you can tell from its graph not being a straight line. But if we just look at a small region around that point where we computed the derivative, the slope of the tangent line, and zoom in on the graph, we will see that the graph um, and the tangent line basically sit on top of each other and you can barely distinguish the two lines. And so the derivative, which is just a single number, lets you approximate the function around the point uh, by a, a line. So this is why we call this approximation a linear approximation to the function at that point. Now I can give you the precise definition of the derivative. We say that the derivative of function f at a point a where a is taken from the domain of f, is the limit as x approaches a of the difference quotient, that is f of x minus f of a divided by x minus a. Of course, this limit might not exist, so that's why we have written provided that the limit exists. Later on, we will see examples of functions whose derivatives at certain points do not exist. If the limit exists, however, we call it the derivative of f at a, and one notation that we use to express it is f prime of a. Another way of writing this limit is by introducing a new variable instead of x. Let's call this new variable age, and we can introduce it as the difference of x and a, so you may think of age as a small nudge, a small addition to a to get to x. Now in this way, the previous limit can be written as the limit as x approaches, as h approaches zero, uh, of the difference quotient, where f of x is now written as f of a plus h minus f of a, that remains unchanged, divided by the small nudge h. So as x approaches a, this small nudge h must approach 0. Now, this is just an equivalent way of writing the same limit, so you can use either of them, and in, depending on the context, uh, one or the other might be easier to use to compute limits. Now, let me mention one more time, that this number, f prime of a, the derivative of f at a, is the slope of the tangent line to the graph of the function, so to the curve where y is equal to f of x, at the point where with coordinates a and f of a. This means that the derivative lets you formulate uh, an equation for the tangent line at that point, and this equation can be written as follows, y equals f prime of a multiplied by x minus a plus f of a. Now this is an equation for a line in the xy plane, a line whose slope is f prime of a, and a line that passes through the point with coordinates a and f of a, because indeed as x is equal to a, the first term cancels because of this factor, and the y coordinate becomes uh, f of uh, a, so it really passes through that point. Okay, 
Now let's compute the, der the derivative of a function using the definition. For example, consider the function f of x equals x squared and let a be any real number because x squared is defined everywhere. Now taking the difference quotient, we get um, x squared minus a squared over x minus a and the limit as x approaches a is a sort of limit that we know how to evaluate already. By factoring the numerator, we get the product of x minus a and x plus a, and we can cancel the common factor of x minus a, leaving us with x plus a, whose limit as x approaches a can be evaluated by direct substitution, and you get a plus a, that is 2a. So the derivative of x squared at a equals 2a. One shorthand that we use to denote this, um, if we want to differentiate the function x squared with respect to x, we get another function 2x, and this derivative function tells us what the slope of the tangent line will be at a certain point. We just need to evaluate it at x equals a to get the derivative at that point being 2a. Now, this example of the derivative of x squared has a really nice geometric interpretation because x squared is just the area of a square of side length x. So uh, when x is equal to a, we get a square of side length uh, a, its area is a squared. And when we uh, nudge uh, the side length up by a bit, h, we get a larger square whose area is now a plus h squared. But the area can also be expressed as the, the sum of the areas of the different pieces. So a squared plus twice h, a times h plus h squared. And it is the coefficient of this linear term in h that is the derivative of the function at a. So that it tells us the rate at which the area grows if we nudge up the side length by a bit. Uh, if we neglect the quadratic term in h, we get a really good linear approximation to the function. Now, uh, let me mention one more fact, namely that if the derivative exists at a point, then that function must necessarily be continuous at that point. So in other words, differentiability implies continuity. The converse of this statement, however, is generally false. It is not true that uh, continuity implies differentiability. Uh, to give you an example of a function that is continuous at a point, but has no derivative at that point, um, let me give you the example of f of x equals the absolute value of x. It's a nice continuous function. It's continuous everywhere, so it is also continuous at zero, but its derivative at zero, f prime of zero, does not exist. And you can simply see this from the graph of the absolute value of x being this characteristic v shape with pointy v. So the slopes of the secant lines as x approaches zero from the left is negative one, whereas the slopes of the secant lines as x approaches zero from the right is positive one. Because these one-sided limits of the difference quotient does, do not match, the limit does not exist, so the derivative does not exist at zero. Okay, let's uh, answer some questions involving derivatives. Which equation represents the tangent line to the graph of f of x equals x squared at the point with coordinates 3 and 9? Pause the video and select your answer now. Hope you paused it and have selected the second option, which indeed matches what we saw for the equation of the tangent line. So the derivative of x squared at a is 2a, so at x equals 3 it's 2 times uh, 3, that is 6, that's why the slope of that line is 6. And indeed, when x is equal to 3, the y-coordinate uh, becomes 9, so it passes through that point. Next question. Which e expression yields the derivative of the function f of x equals 12 times the square root of x at x equals 9? So pause the video and select your answer now. Hope you paused it and have selected the third option. Indeed, in the definition of the derivative, the limit of the difference quotient expressed in terms of the small nudge age for this function at that point uh, provides exactly this limit. Okay, next question. Let's compute this limit. So calculate the derivative of this previous function, 12 times root x at x equals nine. Pause the video, compute the derivative and input it in the box. Okay, I hope you paused it and have inputted two for this derivative, which you can easily find by using conjugates. So this derivative, f prime at nine, being the limit as h approaches zero of 12 root nine plus h minus 12 times root nine divided by h, 
can be evaluated using conjugates, uh, using the conjugate of the numerator, namely 12 times root 9 plus h plus 12 times root 9 divided by um, itself and then multiplying the numerators will lead to some nice simplification namely we will get a 12 squared times h divided by 12 h times the sum of the roots root 9 plus h plus root 9 so cancelling the common factors of 12 and h we are left with 12 over the sum of the roots which by direct substitution gives us 12 divided by root 9 plus root 9 which is 6 it is equal to 2 so the derivative at 9 equals 2. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.